So welcome back friends. So the family we just got back uh, from a, a three day, our very first time our shakedown cruise, a three day camping trip with four of us in the adventure van. And I found some, some fatal flaws, some serious problems that did not work again, or did not work out uh, that I do not want to repeat again. So I wanted to discuss those in the order, number one through five in no particular order, uh, and how we're gonna go about uh, fixing those. Number one, the number one pro huge problem. So we were camping on this beautiful lake uh, and the problem with lakes in the springtime are mosquitoes. There was a lot of mosquitoes and you know, I don't mind them so bad, but with the kids, especially with little baby D, you know, you don't want her to get out there, be out there getting munched. So we needed a place for her to, you know, kind of hang out as a refuge from that. Um, and that was supposed to be the van, but it didn't work out again because we had no seating. Uh, the problem we ran into is, as you know, I didn't have a swivel seat on the driver's side because it wouldn't clear the emergency brake. So I had a swivel seat here, and then this one was around. We had a bunch of junk piled up there, and then we had a baby seat, and it just wasn't really any place to go for four people. There was a one chair here and one chair right here. So the first thing that I did was remedy that yesterday, and I'll show you what I had to do uh, to make that happen. The problem, child, was this guy right here. Ford, in their infinite wisdom, rate have they put that emergency brake handle so high uh, that if you do do a seat swivel, it won't clear and it wouldn't turn around. It ran into it. So I installed the sweet sw seat swivel earlier, ran into that problem, and it, there just wasn't any solution. So I went online, and I wasn't super stoked about what I found on what guys were doing. They were basically taking this thing, it's bolted to the seat frame here, and, and going down and using, you know, using, there's three bolts, and then lowering those and cutting some stuff off, and which wouldn't allow them to use the factory trim. And I thought, you know, that's just, there's got to be a better way. That's just shabby. And, you know, it surprised me that so many guys thought that that was acceptable, that you're going to have all that sharp metal and that mechanism, and you're in and out of this area a lot, you know, going from the front to the back, and not having the factory trim on there I thought was really shabby. Um, so I thought there's got to be a better way. So with much head scratching and figuring, I was able to lower this whole thing without messing up the function of the van and able to maintain the trims. I, it's the first time I've ever seen anyone do that and I was pretty proud to be able to do it but the tolerance is close right there as you can see as this swivels around here oh sorry I gotta slide it forward as the swivels around here uh, it clears now it clears the top of that not by very much but enough for it well it won't scratch and it has the factory uh, trims on there in their factory mounting so that chalk number one <laughs> <laughs> number one things I wouldn't do again is not have a swivel seat, so that's taken care of. Let's move on to number two. The second thing I would not do again is go without ventilation. So we put this window in here, the side, and one of the the idea was is that we could open these guys up, right, and get some ventilation in it. Yeah, we've got some factory windows, and we could roll the factory windows down, but the mosquitoes. The mosquitoes come in and that becomes a huge problem. So this was the solution. These RV style windows have the screens in them so you can get the ventilation, but the mosquitoes and the bugs and all that thing doesn't come, don't come in. Problem is, uh, there wasn't, there's no flow in there. There's no overhead van. And so when Mrs. W was in here cooking, um, and we had four people in here, it became very hot and uncomfortable and it was not nice at all. So the solution is the max fan and I'll show you where I'm gonna put that and how that works. To fix the ventilation problem, what I'm going to do is I'm going to install a, what they call a max fan. It's a, it's a 10 speed fan that's got a remote control, uh, automatically closes, or it's all covered up so it doesn't get rain in it. What that's going to do is that's gonna be able to move 900 cubic feet per minute, CFM, is it CFM? Uh, out through so what when we turn that on it will be it runs on a thermostat and it will auto, kind of like a greenhouse so it'll automatically start blowing and sucking the air out so we'll get some ventilation so it'll pull in from that new window with the screens push it out and when it's hot if it's hotter inside and colder outside the fan will actually reverse and pull the cooled air air in and push the hot out so that's the that's the solution for that that was really a problem and not something we want to have to deal with again the third serious flaw we had was no no place for the sweet loaf to sleep or not a proper place so I know some of you may uh, be down with having infants in your bed um, that's not happening with Mrs. W. Uh, there's, she is very easy going. There's two things you don't mess with. You don't mess with her food 
and you don't mess with her sleep. Uh, if you want, if you, it, it, as long as she has those two things, she's very happy, happy lady. So what we had was we had a one of those pack and plays, which are huge. I mean, they're just enormous, and we had that thing propped up here uh, between the two seats and it was one leg was sitting on the cooler and then we had like a roll of toilet paper and, and it, with a with a ratchet strap I mean it was terrible we had no place to sit in the morning because she sleeps a little bit later uh, we couldn't really have sit here and enjoy our coffee so that was a huge problem so the solution I think I have and I might need your help if you can point me in the right direction I think I have a, I think I, I have an idea that might be just the thing. This is really challenging setting up a van for four people. Most of these builds that you see are set up for two people, you know, a, a retired couple or a young couple and having to set them up for four poses a whole set of problems. So here, we, I, I, the way I say it, we have three options. So let me know in the comments which one you think would be the best. Number one would be a fold down bunk bed right here on the right hand side of the passenger side that would have to have some sort of a net around it. So we'd have to get like a, some netting and, and maybe stuff you could sew it up that we could, you know, snap up the carabiners where we could put her in there. That's number one. The second is the same type, type of a thing. Think of like a trampoline netting or something across the back that uh, is sealed by the rear doors that has something that can go up too so she can't fall out. The third is up here. This is the factory storage area over the drivers and passenger seats. So what we could do is to take all this stuff down, put a framework, maybe an aluminum bar across here, tie it up to the ceiling and bring that out with like a, a plywood and then have that upholstered and we could put a net across the face and we could put her up there. So it's either going to be the bunk bed deal or the back trampoline net or something right here. So I'm not sure if you have any solutions on how we can get the, a place for the sweet loaf. She, she, you know, cause she's moving around now and we don't want her to fall on the, fall off, but we don't want her in a place where we can't get up in the morning. If we get up before her and, and, and use the living area in the seating, um, I'm all ears because this is it's really becoming a challenge. The fourth thing that I will not go can't take the family camping uh, again without uh, would be a portable potty. I don't use these things and I've always had the policy with Mrs. W because she likes to have it because she doesn't tell, well, I don't know why, but she's not super keen on getting outside and into the forest with the wild animals in the middle of the night to use the the facilities, uh, she wants something inside. So we've always had the policy uh, that uh, yes, if you want to use it, you get to clean it. So, <laughs> so uh, and she agreed to that. So a porta potty, especially as you know the baby gets a little bit older, that's going to be a, a must-have item because a lot of places that we camp don't have any facilities, and and especially I think for ladies with kit and kids that that is obviously that's a very important thing for her. So I'm going to we got this little one from our old van. I'm going to incorporate a, a cabinet here where this is kind of hidden right here that she could simply pull it out. Maybe I'll put it on a drawer or, or something. Uh, she can pull it out and then we can have that hidden there, just a small little chemical toilet. So we will not go camping again uh, without a porta potty. That's number four. And the fifth and final thing uh, that I will not go camping with again is, was quite an unpleasant surprise, was the super, super bright LED lighting that came equipped on the van that is connected to the side door and every door of the van. So I uh, woke up in the middle of the night and uh, slid the door open and boom, all, basically it was like the sun came on and uh, everyone very much enjoyed that. So that is a fatal flaw <laughs> that needs to be uh, dealt with. So what we need to do is we need to take this lighting, the switching off of the doors or unplug that and put a switch right here so that you can turn it on, manually turn it on and manually turn it off because that is not very nice. Especially I get up early and the last thing I want uh, before your eyes adjust and all of that is to have four super intense LED lights coming on disturbing the whole family. So that was a uh, that was a definitely a no-go that needs to be addressed immediately. Those things being said, there were some really great things that worked out as well. Uh, for example, the furnace. The furnace was absolutely fabulous. It worked out perfectly. It kept the, the van at a nice temperature. Uh, the wiring worked good. The inverter, everything worked really nice. And I was really happy with the uh, the little galley kitchen, of course. So what I've decided to do is I just I had some green stain and I just temporarily did that, so it you know was it wasn't unfinished, but but. It was kind of a shakedown deal, but it worked great. It was wonderful having a refrigerator. Uh, the storage worked well. One problem with the storage was that it had uh, it's, the drawer is very deep, and there wasn't place for small things. It, things seemed to get all piled up in there. So we need to make some little dividers. Uh, the 110 plug worked really good. I added this little guy here. 
Uh, this is a blue seed deal, and everything is on a switch, so you don't have a phantom power draws. And there's a cigarette lighter and a double USB port right there for, uh, you know, whatever, cameras and iPhones. And then, of course, the cubbies and the refrigerator worked flawlessly. The nice extension there went over the bed. We used that, so that was nice. So what I'm going to do is I am indeed going to cover this with a laminate. Um, you know, a, like a dark gray or dark blue or something. Um, I'll put a, a nice, like a butcher block countertop on it. This was a temporary plywood one. And of course I cut the drawers the wrong size. So I, I'll get some drawer faces uh, that actually fit and finish that up. So all this will be finished very nicely. We'll do the vinyl uh, trims around that and it will look super, super skookum. Can I add a sixth thing, sixth thing that was lacking? Um, do you have the time? A table, a table. So I, 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 my dad and I have been scratching our heads, been trying to figure out a way to work a table in here. It is really challenging. This, of course, is the living area. We've got uh, Mrs. You know, we've got Mrs. W. Baby sitting here. I'm sitting here. You know, the kids here. What we want is we want a table where everyone can kind of come together for meals, uh, or if it's raining outside, we could play a board game or do computer work that's really versatile. And I was, I tried building a a flip up one, and and I th threw all that out. It was terrible. It didn't work I have found the solution um, and it's made in Europe uh, it's a it's an arm uh, it's kind of imagine that you know how the dental arm work on d dental chairs they have the you know the the double deal there that kind of pivots around so it's made for boats and it's called a lagoon so L A G U N you can look them up and they're commonly used in marine boats and and they're starting to come to America it's brilliant it's absolutely brilliant it's a bracket they will mount right here and have an arm. And the nice thing about it is the table will turn 360. You can move it. So if you need to get in, you can push it forward. You can get in and pull it to you. All it's coming. I ordered one, and, and we'll put that all together. But uh, that is the that was the sixth thing uh, that was severely missing was to have a table uh, that uh, the family could sit down at and eat. So thanks for watching. Uh, we'll see you guys on the next video.